Now, Ron's a mathematician. Now, once he gets done counting here, he's going to see there's about 120,000 in the pot. It's going to cost him about 50,000 more to call. I can't imagine he'll throw these tens away. Look at Howard. Howard doesn't want him to call right now. You just got ace king. It's pretty good. But, you know, I like uh, Ron's hand better. I'd rather have a solid pair of tens than a uh, speculative ace king. But Ron knows that he's limped in, and now he's re-raised. Ron's afraid that he has two aces or two kings. Right, and not sure. just If he knew he had ace king, he'd already been in the pot an hour ago. If he calls and loses, he'll go through about half his stack. But still, it's a lot of money laying out there. Big crowd here, eerily quiet. Look at Howard looking away, looking down. Not trying to give any information away. Now Ron's wondering, whoa, this guy limped in on the button and came back over the top of me. That shows a stronger hand normally than just an immediate raise. It's kind of funny how it's looking at those cards, but, you know, he's not going to let anybody else peek at them. It's not <laughs> like it's your home games when no. you have a hand and you show your buddies on the side. And Ron lays this Ron hand holds. down. I'm, I'm no, shocked at that. Well, that surprises me a little bit because Ron's sort of an aggressive player. He likes to gamble it up. There was about 120,000 laying out there. Answer, cost him 52,000 more to call, yet he opted to lay that hand down and give Howard the pot. That's a pretty big lay down, hey, I think, Ron's by Ron Rose right button. there. Let's see if it comes back to haunt him. Well, Ron's got to be questioning that last hand. He's well, thinking, well, should I have called? Well, Ron Rose is a retired executive. He plays poker basically as a hobby. Yeah, that's the kind of hobby I want. A little extra cash on the side. But let's not forget, a lot of these poker players do play this game and make big money playing it. These days, it seems everyone's playing poker. Doctors, lawyers, firemen, even rabbis. But some of these guys do it for a living. If you want to be successful, you really have to approach it as a business. You really have to keep very good records and try and play the best game you possibly can at all times. It's a lot of work to come out positive at the end of the year. If you're not concentrating 100% on your game, it's going to be hard to be positive at the end of the year. Focus is key, and to me, I have a lot of business interests. You know, I get very busy with a lot of projects. That's all part of money management. It's a tough way to make a living. I think you need a lot of talent, and it's hard to overcome all the good players. I wouldn't recommend it. You really have to love the game of poker, and you have to do it because you love it. No matter how you look at it. It's a tough way to make an easy living. The action is on Peter. Pete has a king eight offsuit. He folds. Now look at this. Andy's got the pair of tens again. Now wait, did someone shuffle that deck? <laughs> it's the same hand Ron just had. He comes in for 15,000. Howard with a deuce five offsuit. Well, he feels like Houdini now, an escape artist, getting away from that last hand without losing. He folds, and now here's Ron with ace jacket clubs. Yeah, he's got to play that, you would think. He's a little confused from that last hand. He does call. He sure. calls 15,000. Lane with a 3-9 offsuit gets out of the way, and Phil gets out of the way, and here we go. It's the two tens against the ace jack of clubs. Well, Mike, this is interesting. we got the businessman against the lawyer here. <laughs> yes, we do, Vince, but don't hold that against them. These are both good guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more action from Foxwoods right after this. Bucks battle at the world's largest casino. Businessman Ron Rose is looking at a bad deal. He's run into a tough hand held by poker pro and attorney, Andy Block. Now, Rose needs help from Lady Luck to avoid a crushing loss here at Foxwoods. We're gonna have a flop. It's two tens, remember, for Andy. Ace jacket clubs for Ron. And on the flop, flop comes queen four four. Now this is no help to Ron. Now, Andy's got a pair of tens. And he checks. Yeah, Ron says, haul in quickly in. without hesitating. Andy calls. And Andy calls him just as quick. Andy made a great call right there immediately. He didn't even hesitate. Absolutely. Ron is uh, he stands up. a little bit of a tilt factor, I think. He's just pushing it in. He moved all his chips okay, in. Now Ron's going to have to catch an ace or a jack, or Andy's going to double up here. Uh, the turn is a no, deuce. not yet. 
One more card to do it. The deuce comes off. He needs an ace or a jack. Here we go. And it's another deuce. No help. Andy Block is doubled up here, and that hand is going to cripple Ron. Oh, man. He is spiraling down. That is devastating to him. What a great call by Andy right there. He watched that last pot play between Howard and Ron. He thought maybe the guy's a little bit on tilt. Great call. I'll be the most aggressive player at the table. If I can sense my opponent, I'm going to then turn to like the psychological aspects of the game. Well, Phil and Lane are still our two chip leaders. Howard and Andy have moved up on the scale in pretty good position. Peter stayed about the same, and Ron has got to regroup quickly here, or he's going to be in serious trouble. Ron is trying to lick his wounds here. Peter's going to be the first to act here. He looks down at a Queen-10 offsuit. That Queen-10 is not that good. 15 times. It's not good at all to open in first position with now look it. at this, but he's going to raise with it. He's doing it. He's coming for 15,500. 15,500. I'm not crazy about this play. Andy folds. Howard looks at a 6-5 and folds. Ron with a 6-deuce on the button folds. Lane with a king-4 folds. And look at this. Phil has picked up two nines in the big blind. Yep, two nines, a real hand. And he's just going to call it, Mike. Well, you have to give respect to a guy who raised in first position. Phil's going to look at a flop before he goes any farther with this hand. And the flop is 10-8-5. This is a good flop. A great flop for Pete. He's caught his pair of 10s with a queen kicker in front of Phil's 9s. But it's not a bad-looking flop if you have two nines either. So Phil looks like he's going to test the water here. 20,000. All in. Pete quickly goes all in over the top. All in. He's got tens. I mean, he didn't even bat an eye for 100,000. He moves his chips in. And now Phil's got to make a decision here. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Phil's got a big problem. Now, you have to give the guy respect that comes in an early position with the raise. And now you bet out. Now he moves all in for all his chips. Your two nines simply just shrunk up. I'll tell you, this could be a crippling blow to Phil Ivey if he calls this bet and doesn't catch something. He's going to fold this hand. That's a very good fold by Phil Ivey right Phil there. Absolutely. Peter's good players know when to get away from a hand, and that's exactly what Phil did. Well, you got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him. Phil Ivey folded correctly there. There's a lot of money on the line. I'm going to do my best to win it. Hey, but right now, Lane and Phil are still our chip leaders, and Andy and Peter and Howard have all gone up, and poor Ron is bringing up the caboose right now. Action is on Andy. Andy peeks down, looks at a queen eight offsuit. He folds. Howard has a junk hand, a three nine offsuit, and folds. Ron has an ace and a seven in his hand. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't move all in right here. He's only got 28,000 left. He folds the ace high. This is totally out of characteristic from Ron. Absolutely. This guy's usually playing really aggressive. He's obviously disturbed from the last few hands. Now Lane folds Jack Four on the button, and here comes aggressive Phil Ivey. Raise it up. And look at this. He's raising the pot. He's come in for 13,000 with a queen six. There he goes. Peter has picked up a monster hand, the big blind, an ace queen. Well, I wouldn't call it a monster, but it's a pretty solid hand. It's a big hand against a blind, believe me. And he calls. He doesn't re-raise. He just calls. We're going to see a flop. Now, Phil has queen six. Peter has ace queen. The flop comes ace six five. Oh, no, this is very interesting. Obviously, Peter's got aces with a queen kicker, and Phil's got only a pair of sixes. But look at this. He's lining up to bet. Well, he raised before the flop. He's going to bet on the flop. He fires out 15,000. 15,000. I raise it. Oh, boy. Peter Pete's raised. going up. Pete's raising over the top. I love this. He's got the aces with a queen raise kicker. He's got a real big hand. He's going to raise it 30,000. He bets 45,000. Pete not looking intimidated whatsoever of Phil. No. What is Phil thinking here? Now he realizes his tactic just backfired. He's only got the sixes. He's got this guy raising him now. And if he's putting a move on him here, he didn't re-raise him before the flop. He raised it 30,000. I not think he's got an ace, but right now, he is in the oven here. 
Look at his eyes go. He's calculating everything. Phil Ivory never rushes any decisions. He's always deliberate. He usually always shoots his eyes around, glancing at his opponents. I'm all in. He's going all Phil's in. going all in. All Phil in. goes all He's in. He's putting it all on the line. He replays back over the top again. What a bold move. He's going to try to take Pete right out right here, right now. This is pretty amazing. Whoa. Phil. Peter takes his glasses off. Look at this. Now, this is all his money. He's going to be broke if he loses this pot. He got a pair of aces. He got a pretty big kicker. Queen doesn't get much yeah. bigger. Now he's afraid. Does his opponent have an ace king? Did he flop three sixes or three fives? He could have aces up. He could have sixes and fives. Yeah, there's not many hands that can beat him right now, but still, he has to give respect to the guy who's come over the top for all his money. I've been admiring Peter so far because he's been very aggressive with weak hands, and now he finally has a hand here. And now he's scratching his head wondering what to do. What a decision by Peter. You can see him being tortured. He feels like he's being stretched on the rack or something. Here, look at him. It's mortality for him if he calls and loses this pot, and that's what he's thinking about. He doesn't want to die at this moment. I'll be very surprised if he does not call this, though. I mean, he has a pretty big hand here. He's up against an aggressive player. You know, you got to give Phil Ivy a lot of credit here. I mean, he's, this is, it takes a lot of moxie. When you bet and a guy raises you 30000 and you move all in with a second pair on the board with an A standing out there and you don't have one, whoa. This is why Phil Ivy is a great player. He has great imagination here to re-raise this bet. Now, he has a tough decision. We can see it's easy to make, and everybody out there saying, call, call, you idiot. This is an easy call. But it's not when you're sitting on the battlefield, I can tell you. He's thinking about the hands he can lose to, like ace-king, like three fives, like three sixes. There are hands that can beat him. He is stupefied. He's talking to himself now. Oh, man. <laughs> just think, if he just knew what Phil Ivey had right here. I'll let you have it. Okay. Peter's going to lay down the hand. Phil's going to take the Whoa. pot. He lets him have it. A big lay down right there by Peter Dordana. Well, this is why Phil is great. Let me tell you right now, the way that hand came out, it was a Rolls Royce of bluffs. Ron. Pete seemed utterly intimidated by Phil there, laying down a superior hand. Oh, you're right, Mike, but that's because Phil at this point has what we call in poker a good table image. And our own Shauna Hyatt is going to tell you a little bit more about table image. Your grandma told you you can't judge a book by its cover, but at a poker table, it's a whole lot more complex than that. Our next poker corner, table image. When you walk up to a poker table, you don't just bring yourself, you bring an image. Usually in a woman holding, you want your opponents afraid of you. It's called table image, and that image may be the key to winning or losing. Table image is the entire poker history, what you've done up to that point that the other players at the table know about. And whether they think that you're playing well or you're playing badly, whether you're playing tight or you're playing too loose. A tight player is going to try and create an image of being a loose player and what he does. I try to project an image that I'm a tighter player than I am. A lot of times I want to project a safe, conservative image. A lot of the top players have this image of being very safe and conservative and then they want to make some raises and steal some chips that way. If you have, you're a very aggressive player, you can just pick up extra chips without doing anything just because of your table image. So if you want to be a poker star, just like in Hollywood, it's all about the image. Okay. Ron Rose's first act here. He's got the ace four of diamonds. He's short on chips, and there he goes. He goes all in. He's going all in. Basically, this is a cry for help out of Ron Rose. He's a desperate man. <laughs> He's on a short stack. And now look at Lane. Lane has picked up a queen jack here. Yeah, Ron's not bad. And he's just won that last pot. Yeah, he's on a roll. He's the chip leader of the tournament. He's thinking about calling here. On the other hand, he knows everybody else has yet to act behind him. Look at poor Ron Rose. Ron, call 911. You got some problems here, buddy. He may win this pot. Lane's going to make him sweat. Look at this. Well, Lane's thinking. Lane knows Ron's been on two left feet all day. Does he want to play? Nope. All those people act behind him. He folds his hand. Phil folds. Peter quickly folds. Never and mind. look at Andy. Andy's picked up an ace-queen. 
A big hand in the blind. Oh, Ron's just praying. Go out. Please go I out. I can't see how Annie can even think about folding. No, I can't.